Hey, how y'all doing today? Great to see you today here at Faith Live. Would you welcome Powell Campus with us right now? Powell, great to have you. Online campus, great to have you. It is a great day to be alive. And I tell you what, we're going to have a great service today. I got a lot to cover. Are you ready? Can you listen fast? Okay. You got your pencils out? Actually, how many actually have your pencils out? I heard a lot of yeses. Show it. You got a pen. That's a pen. No, I'm just kidding. I always say that. Get your pencils out. That's kind of gives my age away, I guess, a little bit. <laughs> Has to be a number two pencil, right? It's whatever. Is there a number one pencil? I don't know. Get a number two pencil. I don't know. Anyway. All right. Got your Bibles out. We've been talking this entire Christmas season, January season, about different, but before that even, I... <laughs> about posturing yourself to take the year. That's why we do the difference year can make, is to kind of encourage you to take the year. And we had talked about, remember, just someone nod yes. Whew, okay, it's just like, you know, you go to all this work and just like. All right, let me ask you this question. How many have read all five of my financial revolution books? Raise your hand, all five. How many have read this one to the end? Man, see, it's like over the ground. Okay, it's okay. You'll get it. Well, I'm teaching today to help you win this year. And, uh, of course, every time I teach, I'm teaching you to win. But this year is this year. You had last year. This is your this year. And uh, unless you change what you do this year, you're going to have the same thing you had last year. So I'm going to keep on you. And uh, so all right, we're talking about the process. We're going to talk about the process today that uh, you must master to, to receive from heaven all that you need because any assignment God gives you requires provision. And it's going to require more than you can do yourself. I mean, it's going to take more people, more money, more everything uh, to capture. You can't do it yourself. You've got to do it by the Holy Spirit and with God. And you know our story of being in debt all those years and suffering and, you know, even though a Christian, panic attacks, antidepressants, you know, serious debt, hopelessness, you know, we won't go through that. Uh, but when God spoke to me that day after those nine years, and I finally got really serious about hearing God and wanting to get the answer, he said, what? You know what he said. You're in this mess because you never learned how my kingdom operated, how it works. And then he added a phrase, and it's not my fault. Mm-hmm. Luke chapter 6, verse 20, you should almost have this one memorized. Blessed are you who are poor, for God feels sorry for you, and you can ask people for hand-me-downs. No. What does that mean? Blessed are you who are poor, for now you have the kingdom. What does that mean? The kingdom has laws. You are a citizen of this kingdom. You're born again. You change kingdoms. You become a, king, uh, a member of the kingdom of God. In that kingdom, as we learn, kingdoms are ruled by laws, government. Jesus is the head of this government. It didn't say mob of people. It said kingdom. And so if you're going to be effective in this kingdom, you need to learn the laws. So we talk about that all the time. So we lived in that little old farmhouse. I think they have a picture of it, a little farmhouse. There, there it is. There's uh, Amy, Tim, and Tom. I mean, that's a cute picture. If you lived there, it wouldn't be so cute, but it's cute. <laughs> and then we bought, began to apply the kingdom principles. I like this next picture better. That's what we were able to pay for by learning how the kingdom operated, the 60 acres of fine hunting woods. And I like that. Now, Drinda did a great job at the farmhouse. Had to fight raccoons and rats off all the time. We lost some bees and everything else, but... Nevertheless, God led us by teaching us how the kingdom operates. Now, my job as your pastor is to teach you how the kingdom operates. Because you have to know how to take that territory to take the enemy on. And if you don't know how the kingdom operates, he'll spook you into stopping. He'll intimidate you to quit when you shouldn't quit. So we're going to get into that today, a process for, let's say this, just dump the religion. Let's just kind of do this. Kind of almost forget everything you learned back in religious culture. You know, you know what I'm talking about. When you were taught to hope things happen, and you didn't know what God would do. 
right? You didn't know what God would do. You hoped God would do something about your problem, but you would, you would pray, but really you wouldn't pray. You're really begging. That's really what it was, hoping he'd do something. In a stark contrast to 1 John chapter 5 that says, this is my confidence if I ask anything according to his will, he's the king, I know that he hears, he takes the case, he'll judge the case, and I, I have what I've asked of him. I said, it's his, my, I have what he says is mine. That's fact. Now, this is our scripture for today, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6. You probably all can quote it, but we're going to dig into it. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly, okay, let's stop right there. A lot of you tuned me out. Oh, no, that's the scripture for today. Is pastor going to talk about giving? Okay, just, just you don't know about giving. Oh, yeah, we do. I, I, just hang with me. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Paul was teaching, obviously he taught this before, but people say, well, I know about giving. What about you, pal, you online? Oh, I know about giving. Let me submit, I don't think so. People don't know. Let me explain what I mean. This scripture says that sowing, that's a verb, you do that, and reaping, that's a verb, you do that. But what is sowing? Well, a farmer, when he sows a seed, it is a specific seed in a specific place, a specific time, a specific method. How deep do you plant it? What do you plant? When's the season? How do you plant it? What am I going to... See, you, it's a whole process, and then you got to cultivate. You have enemies, bugs, viruses, fungus, trying to attack that crop. you got to protect the crop, and then you come to harvest. you got to have the equipment, know the season, what the harvest looks like, when it's ripe, how to monetize it. So do you know how to give? No. The Lord told me once, Christians give out of duty and, and uh, obligation. They need to be taught how. They need to ta be taught how to give. And if you're going to see results, now let me ask you this: If you knew nothing about farming, nothing at all, and I gave you a bag of seed, what would most people do with it? They'd eat it. Oh, thank you very much. A farmer would know that that bag of seed could feed his family the rest of his life. He could plant it, harvest it, keep some seed, sow it, harvest it, feed him the rest of his life. So there's a process. It's not just giving. This is why so many people fail in their giving. So many Christians, well, I, I tried, I had one pastor tell me, you know, my, my people have tried that giving thing. <laughs> Oh, so you're saying God lies then, okay. Have you ever thought maybe there's something you don't know about giving instead of blaming God? Yeah. Most people give and then wait for God to do something. Understand this. God can make things grow, but he does not harvest. God can make things grow, but he does not harvest. You have to know what the harvest looks like and where to look for it, how to do it, to harvest. Now, we're not going to talk in great detail today about harvest because we're going to go back to the very beginning and talk about giving. But most Christians have mailbox mentality. There's a process. Drenda and I first married. We, had a, we lived in Tulsa. We decided to sow a garden. Thought it wouldn't be nice to sow a garden. We sowed a garden and the plants didn't grow. The corn got that high. Now, let me ask you, how many here would think, okay, something is wrong? We didn't know what was wrong. The neighbor comes over one day and sees our garden and says, why did you plant your garden inside the woods? <clears throat> yeah. I won't go there, but anyway. Yes. How many here would, how many probably smart enough to know if you plant your garden in the woods, in the shade, it's not gonna grow. We didn't. But we still expected the crop. So many Christians are like that. If you don't know the rules, you don't know how things work, you're not gonna get the results you're expecting. Unfortunately, then we blame God, right? Now, there's several types of giving in the Bible. One is the most familiar probably, that's generosity. 
In uh, Proverbs chapter 19, 17, it says, if you help the poor, you're lending to the Lord and he will repay you. That's great. How many know you can't get rich being repaid? Hmm? Now, as you give, you give seed to the sower, bread for eating, he'll increase your seed to give, increase your seed. So as you're giving a generous, God will keep increasing your seed to be able to give, but you're not gonna tap into the overflow. You'll see some changes. You'll see things happening, but you will not tap in. Second way we hear about giving in the Bible is the tithe. Now the tithe, the word means 10%. There's a lot of confusion, if you'll say that, in the body of Christ today, saying that the tithe was part of the Old Testament and it's no longer in effect. What is true is the law requiring you to tithe to be righteous in God's eyes has been canceled. Colossians says it was nailed to the cross. The law demanding that you tithe has been canceled. But the law of the tithe, meaning the function, the principle of the tithe, has not been canceled. Because let's look at Malachi chapter 3 and get this straight. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this. Now, he's talking to Old Testament folks here because the Levites, the priests, didn't raise crops. They depended upon the people to bring their offerings into the storehouse, and that's how they were fed. So God says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Now, test me in this and see if not, I'll not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it Okay, stop right there. Most people have been taught that if they tithe, that they're going to be blessed to the point of not being able to handle it. Well, pastor, that's what it says. But that's not all that it says. Let's finish the sentence out. Let's finish it. All right. How are you going to be blessed? He says how you're going to be blessed. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. And Vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before they're ripe. means fungus and things like that. Says God Almighty, then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land. So what does it mean he's going to open the floodgates? What is flood referring to? Water. What's he going to do? It's going to rain on your crops. You're going to have great crops. Your crops. See that? See that? Your crops. What are you planting? See, you have a part in that equation. Your crops. You tithe, what it does is it rebukes the devourer off your crops so you can reap the harvest off your crops, but the tithe does not cause your harvest to be multiplied and, and be successful to the point of overflowing unless you plant a big enough crop. I mean, you can plant two, two plants and they'd be blessed. It's not going to fill your barn up, though. Do you understand what I'm saying? The tithe, the Old Testament tithe, has been canceled. But as long as Satan's on the loose, the Bible says he is still, he calls this, the Bible says he's, he calls himself the God of this world to kill, steal, and destroy. He's still on the loose. Is that right? So the tithe, the, the law of the tithe is still in effect. As long as Satan is on the earth, the law of the tithe, the function of the tithe will stay in existence. But the law demanding you tithe to be righteous has been canceled. Does that make sense? Your choice. But if you understand the blessing of it, you will je definitely want to jump in there. Number three, today I want to teach along the lines of sowing. The very first part of what we talked about in the sense of specific purposes. Now, God may lead you to sow uh, to any project. He'll, he'll, he'll may say, hey, I want you to support that. That's fine. And being obedient, <clears throat> of course, that's giving. But I'm talking about you don't need an unction from the Holy Spirit to give because you chose. Now, Paul is reminding this church. He's saying, remember, you're collecting an offering. Remember, if you sow sparingly, this is what's going to happen. If you sow generously, this is going to happen. So whose choice is it to give? Theirs. He's not saying God told me you're to give. He's not, you know, God told me you're supposed to give, right? You ever... No, that's not what he's saying. He's encouraging them. It's their choice to give what they want to give and how they want to be involved. It's their choice. So I'm talking today about sowing a seed 
for a purpose, your choice. Now, if we raise a garden, it's our choice. We, we decide to raise a garden. We plant the seed with a specific purpose. So understand this. A specific seed is needed for a specific harvest. If I want lima beans, I'm going to look for a lima bean seed to sow, and I'm going to re- reap lima beans. Now, that's how it works. So understand this. If you want to harvest, you must sow a specific seed. Now, we see in the Bible when the bread multiplied, the bread multiplied to bread. Fish multiplied to fish. The oil multiplied to oil. All right? That's how it works. You reap what you sow. Now, money is different. You see, money is a bartering system, as I said many times, and I'm getting, this is all review. Money, you can name money. You go to the grocery store, you name money every day. Right? It's a bartering system. So I could go buy fish and then sow the fish, but I can bypass that. I can sow money and name it fish. Right? Okay. So let's understand that. We can sow money. Now, sowing a seed is very specific. It's going to reproduce after itself. A specific seed will always produce a specific harvest. Thus, you must know to sow a seed that's specific if you're expecting a specific harvest. Now, for instance, back when we were married, I had a Kawasaki 1000. I loved motorcycles. Her family sold motorcycles. In fact, I think Don used to race motorcycles. Even Drinda got involved racing motorcycles. And they sold Hondas and Suzukis and Yamahas and all that. And uh, we loved motorcycles. Our first date was on a motorcycle until the day it was, it was stolen before we were married. But now... We were, had a lot of expenses, so we didn't replace it. And we had children and, uh, you know, lived in the old farmhouse. I decided that I did not want a brand new motorcycle outside in the rain, so I would always sow my seed with this clause when we get a garage. But I began to sow a seed for an ST1100, Honda ST1100, way back when we first got married. That was the bike I wanted to have. And so every summer, my pastor would ride bikes, and I would give him a check, $300. This is for your gasoline, for your summer riding, and I'm receiving a, an ST1100, Honda ST1100. During that period of time, uh, I was given two bikes, and I gave them away. I bought three used bikes and gave them away. Well, pastor, I thought that you said you, you, you liked motorcycles. and No, I, see, I, I didn't buy them to keep. I didn't even ride them. You see, I couldn't afford the one I wanted. I gave them away. Even the two that were given to me, I gave away. Why? Because it wasn't my harvest. It wasn't my harvest. My harvest was very specific. And I knew that it wasn't my harvest, and so I sowed that. And then eventually, someone pulls in the driveway and gives me a brand new ST. 1300, the 1100 motor, they had enlarged it to 1300 cc, and I had a brand new ST 1300. That was a good day. <laughs> Rode that for years, then started riding Harleys with my friend from New Zealand. All he'd ride is Harleys. Those Harley riders are pretty, you know, intense. You ride a Honda? <laughs> you know, it's like. Anyway, we rented Harleys all over, the, all over New Zealand, all over Canada and America. Rode 19 big, big motorcycle rides with him. And eventually, I began to like the Harley. It was heavier, you know, travel bike. Good. And I, I said, you know, I think I, I'm, I'd like to have a Harley. Well, I'd sewed, you know, multiple bikes away. And one day, someone gave me a brand new Harley. Um, so that was great. Now, I'm not insinuating that someone has to give you everything. At the time, I could buy a Harley. But nevertheless, I'm just teaching a principle of how these things came to pass because you'll need to duplicate these things, the laws of the kingdom, right? Right, okay. Now, now I'm gonna get into the meat of of the message. That was just review. Mark chapter six, verse 35, by this time it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said. It's already very late. Send the people away so they can go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus said, you give them something to eat. 15,000 people. There was 5,000 men, 15 to 20,000 people there, counting children, women. You give them something to eat. Now, right now, everyone listening to the sound of my voice should have a piece of paper out because they did not have 
enough food to feed that many people. We know that, right? So what happens next, as a spiritual scientist, you want to pay very close attention to what Jesus did. How did he handle this? Well, the disciples said, well, excuse me, and said that would take more than a half a year's wages. Are we go, go spend that much money? To, even if they had the money to organize the wagons necessary and the, the travel necessary to go gather that bread, pay for it, bring it back, the day had been gone. There was no way, and Jesus knew that. No, it's, it's late. You feed them. Well, of course they're going to think that's impossible. But then Jesus says something that's critical to your understanding. How many loaves do you have? He asked, go and see. Now, you say, why would Jesus ask that? He already knows there's not enough bread there. He's not asking for the bread to feed them. He's looking for a specific seed to yield a specific harvest. You understand what I'm saying? He knows what they need. He's just saying, what do you have? He's looking for a specific seed for a specific harvest. He's not looking for the bread to feed them. He, they know that's not there. You got it so far? All right. If you follow the stories here at Faith Life, you'll notice they're always very specific. The kingdom is very specific. Look at creation. The kingdom's the same way. All right, let's move on. Verse 39. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. They sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and two fish, looking up to heaven. He gave thanks. Or some versions say he blessed it. Blessed means consecrate, separate. We, we've taught this many, many times. Broke the loaves. They distributed it. The bread multiplied. They had 12 baskets left over. Great story. Not, not just a great story, it's a great illustration. How did that happen? You as a spiritual scientist need to be saying, okay, how did that happen? Oh, so let's get, dig into this. What do you have? Five loaves, two fish. What's the next thing Jesus did? What's the next thing he did in the story? Bring it to me. Now, you already know, you've been taught, we've been taught, taught this for years. What happened to the bread and the fish when he blessed it? changed kingdoms, left the jurisdiction of the kingdom of men, came under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of heaven, and that is the only reason God had the jurisdiction to multiply the bread, okay? But something else happened that you may not have caught that is essential to your understanding. You know, when he took the bread, let me ask you this, we know it changed kingdoms, but when did it change kingdoms? Did it change kingdoms when he took it, he had possession of it? Or did it change kingdoms when he spoke over it? Can you verify that in scripture? Yes, we can. Well, Romans 10.10, 10. it's how you were saved, right? If you believe in your heart, you're justified. Remember that? With your heart, you believe and are justified. This is how you're born again. When you believe in your heart, you're justified. What does that mean? You're in faith. Now, this part people don't get. You're in faith, but nothing happens yet. When you believe in your heart before heaven and earth, you are justified, meaning it's now legal for heaven to invade earth, your life. But nothing happens yet. You mean, pastor, I could be in faith and nothing happened? Exactly. Because the sentence doesn't end there, does it? We've taught this before. Then you what? Speak with your mouth and profess or confess your faith and are saved. You see, you have the jurisdiction. Heaven's waiting. Heaven's waiting. You're in faith. Heaven's waiting. When you speak, the authority is released. Now, let's go back to our story. We now know that when Jesus took the bread, it had not changed kingdoms yet. When he blessed it, he separated it, brought it under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of God, then, and only then, did the anointing of God have the legal jurisdiction to, to multiply the bread. So when you give, when do you speak over it? Back up here. This is crucial. 
Years ago, you all know I deer hunt, right? You all know that. I don't, it's, it's, it's not really proper to say that. I don't hunt deer, I receive deer. I used to hunt deer for days and days and come home empty back in history until God taught me how to receive deer by faith. And, you know, we have all kinds, you've heard all the stories. I have a book called Faith Hunt. You know, the deer come to me. They come to me. And we got down to the point through the years we could even sow a seed for a specific deer, a doe or a buck, or even name the number of points on the antlers. I know you think it's crazy, but so is feeding 20,000 people five loaves. <laughs> Well, this one day, this is after years, this is like clockwork. I sowed my seed for a button buck. Now, button buck's a young buck, little, little buttons, young buck. Very good, it's, you know, eating deer. And I went out, of course, been doing it for years, saw nothing. Went out the next day, saw nothing. Now, stop everything. I'm not doing this. I'm not going back to the old labor sweat, sweat system of trying to make this thing happen. You follow me? The earth curse system, painful toil and sweat. I'm not stepping back into that system of uh, just hoping things happen and, and just keep laboring and laboring and eventually hoping things happen. No, no, I've already learned more about that. I've already, no, no, I passed this long time ago. Because I've already done this long time ago, I already know the problem's not on the power station. There's something with the switch or the light bulb. I know it's on my end. I mean, I've got a history I've seen this work over and over and over again. Now, because I don't know where the short circuit is, I need to ask God, what's, what's the deal? What happened? And he answered me right away. Now, here's the point. Most people would say, oh, Pastor Gary, you can't expect every time you go out hunting, you're going to get the deer you sowed for or believe you'll get a deer every time you go hunting, can you? Yes. Well, you don't expect God to heal everyone. Yes. You can't expect, yes. Every promise is, yes, I do expect. And it, you do not have to put up with dysfunction. Understand me. It's yes. If you're getting a no, you need to examine why you're getting a no. I know to most religious minds, this is nuts. You may not even believe me, but you will eventually. Give us a year. That's what I always say. Learn how it works. So I began to pray in the Spirit. God, what happened? He spoke right away. He said, you didn't speak over it. Speak over it? Yeah, he said, you remember Mark 6, don't you? Jesus took the bread. He spoke over it, right? Here's what I said. I actually said this out loud. I have to do that? Now, the thing is, I've been doing that all these years. This particular year, I was busy in the office. I knew I was going out hunting. I took a check, took my envelope, wrote button buck on my check, Melted it off like a bill. I did not speak over it when I released that. I thought that was the same thing. God's saying, no, it's not the same thing. Look at Mark's, Jesus took possession of it. They gave him the check, if you will. But nothing happened until he spoke over it. I said, well, I'm going to try this out. Okay, I'm going to try, I got to check it out, right? I'm going to test my hypothesis. So I, I got my envelope out, my check out that day, wrote button buck. We agreed. This time we spoke over it in the name of Jesus. According to Mark eleven twenty four. 24, we receive when we pray. Father, I receive a button buck tomorrow morning when I go out. Now, I, see, you understand, think about this. Hunting is hoping. If you knew before you went out that you're coming back with a deer or you're coming back with whatever provision you name, that would completely change your attitude. So I went out. You go out early in the morning. Now, they have a certain time frame. You can't shoot until a certain, like 30 minutes before sunrise. But you get up in the tree stand before that time frame starts. So, you know, you can still see it's getting light. And I'm up there, and it's getting light. And here comes this deer, and it comes right to my tree. I'm in a big woods. It comes straight to my tree. And it comes, and here's the thing, it, it began to circle it. It was the craziest thing I ever saw. I'm watching it go around. Now, you can't see in that dim morning light, I couldn't, button bucks, sometimes they're little buttons, you can't really see them, they don't stick up. I couldn't, now, it's, it's legal to shoot a doe or a buck. 
So I wouldn't do anything illegal. I mean, I, you know, but I knew it, it, had to be the, it had to be the button buck. I mean, look at him, he's just going around the tree. He's still looking at his watch. Get it over fast. <laughs> well, I, I got him and I went down, checked it. Oh, sure enough, he's a button buck. Now, Tim comes running over. Now, Tim had hunted with me all three days and had not seen a deer. Now, he hunts just like I do by faith. But he sowed his seat that same day I did, just like I did. He says, Dad, he goes, I've been out three days. I haven't even seen a deer. I said, Tim, I know exactly what happened. God told me what happened, how to correct it. So I told him. He says, man, I'm going to check it out tomorrow myself. So this was back in the warehouse days. We stopped at the warehouse there. We were in town, stopped there. He made his check out. He wrote for my six-point buck. I remember, th- I remember saying to him, well, that's specific. Now, he'd already seen that tested. We'd already seen that happen. So he went out in the morning, same tree, same thing. A buck comes up, circles the tree till it comes time to, to be legal, and it's a six point. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. So many believers fill the checkout, set it in the offering plate without giving, that, without giving it an assignment. Without giving it an assignment. Yet they're expecting... Because they know what they mean, what they want, what they have to, you know, what they're believing for. But they know that, but they have not given it an assignment. Right? And if you're going to win in this life, in this year, you, gotta, you, know, you need to know how to give a specific assignment to your giving. If you need a specific harvest. Now, I've got, a, I've got proof, besides my hundreds of stories... I got a video that you must see. Let's watch it right now. Uh, we met and then we started dating. Uh, but right around that time, I found Faith Life and I started trying to figure this, this out, coming here. And uh, you know, she, she ended up coming with me and we, we really enjoyed it. And since my first day here, I was in love. Feel Light was my church home. I suppose should be here. I grew up in a Christian family and I'm from Brazil and I'm so thankful for my grandparents because it was my grandma that took me to church and it was a great church. We were spirit filled, but we didn't really learn about the kingdom. And I'm really curious, I love to learn. And so how Pastor Gary and all the pastor, how they were teaching was capture my attention. And I was driving, listen Pastor Gary, I would buy books, CDs, my drives at uh, Cincinnati Columbus were listening to the audios and reading the book. Started learning uh, Kingdom Principles Gary talks about. And so the first book that we decided to read together as, a, as dating uh, was Power of Allegiance. We set the tone that uh, our principle would be learning about the kingdom before marriage. Fast forward, one day we come here on October and Pastor Gary is doing again a service about Faith Hunt. And then he was saying, where are the hunters here? Just one guy out there raised his hand. And I said, here. I was like, I'm going to hunt a deer this year. And I told him, his family, they are hunters. And his, his dad, his grandparents, his brother, and a lot yeah, of people we, there. Growing up, we hunted. That was kind of what my family did. It was always every year we'd go and everything like that. And I loved it. I loved it. It was, it was amazing to see her raise her hand. My favorite number, I say that is my God number, is the number seven. I love the number seven. And I said, I'm going to go hunt a deer, and I will have a seven-point deer. So for a whole month, I'm speaking. I'm going to hunt a deer. We sow a seed first yep. in agreement. I didn't know how much sow a seed. It was my first time for a deer. I just felt my heart. I would sow $100 for the deer. And I believed, I put some, all these scriptures I was believing for. We were in 11 people. I was the only girl. They were saying, ah, oh, we heard that you're going to hunt a deer. I said, yes, I'm going to hunt a deer. You guys going to see. It's going to be a seven points. And they said, do you think you can choose how many points you're gonna get? When you show up a deer, he's gonna get a deer, you're gonna kill the deer. I said, no, I'm gonna kill seven points. And uh, we go to this place and nothing happened. 
nothing. We didn't see nothing. Even yeah. a movement. We didn't the, see. the morning of the first day it was, I don't know, we just didn't see anything. So. Anything. And then I was praying in spirit, and then I told him, I'm praying, and I asked the Holy Spirit to give us strategies. And we need to move. We need to change a tree stand. And he said, wait, I think I have one tree stand back in the prophet. Nobody wants. I felt my heart so strong, go, go. We go there and I was like speaking, imagining my deer coming. I said, baby, he's coming. My deer's coming somewhere. I can see the deer coming. And then suddenly I stopped talking. On my left, a deer started coming. And I'm like, wow. And then he was far away. And then I learned that we need to take authority. We need to speak because God already gave us the power. So I said, in the name of Jesus, you come over here. So the deer started walking in front of us. He was 35 yards. And then my husband has said, wait, wait, because I was like, ready. I was ready. I was, you know, wait, wait, and I was like, that made a noise. I was like, Jesus, just help me. And then I was like, Phew. I shoot the deer. I can see the deer running, running. On my left side, turns the legs up. And I was like, she nailed. Thank was, you, Lord. Awesome. He was screaming, good job, good job. I don't know, he was like, surprised? I was not surprised. I was just looking to this guy. I was, I was, like, I was all about it. I was, man, that was an amazing shot. I was so happy for my dear, but I was so more happy because the kingdom worked. And through me, you know, I was really excited that I prayed, I saw a seed, I believed. We saw the deer. It was amazing. I'm walking there to find a deer. The first thing I do is count. How many? Seven points. And it was a true seven point. It wasn't like it was eight and then one broke off. It no, was... it was seven points and it was beautiful. And on my check, when I sold the seed, I said I wanted the biggest from the weekend because I knew I would go in with 11 guys. They would be like joking around. The cool thing for me, maybe not for them, no one killed a deer the entire weekend. I was the only one. And I was like, thank you, Lord. And I asked the Lord of return to give me my testimony, you know? I was telling them, God showed me. God helped me. To be that great shot was God, you know? And you can do the same. And we have people asking us, asking him, so how happened? How did I God kill that deer? And, and exactly how she was speaking for a whole month. We are so excited, our family are excited. Our friends, they wanna know more about it. So it's so good because we love the kingdom, we love the church, and we we were blessed to be able to bring to church like more 20 people or so to church. Yeah, you know, it's so, it's, uh, it's that light knock, you know, you, yeah. you, can, you be the example and yeah. other people see it and maybe not right away, but eventually they say, all right, what, yeah. something's different here. So discover the love God has for you, and this love comes so many things. Salvation, restoration, but also prosperity. Because in religion, we learn, you need to do all these things, and then you're gonna be able to receive. The Lord say, no, I'm looking for a relationship with you. Come with a true heart, but first, delight in the Lord, and He will give the desires of your heart. Definitely stick around here. Like, build relationships here, figure, learn more. Watch all the kingdom stories. That will move you to the point of saying, all right, you, know, you can't deny the evidence. Yes. But ultimately, um, it's there for you. You have to learn how to receive it, how to speak it, how to get your heart convinced. Ask the Lord, say, Lord, I'm, I am at this place. These are my needs. Show me how I can get better. Show me how I can learn. Jesus said he gave the authority to us. So we need to stop begging God, stop waiting for him. And we need to thank him because he gave the authority. And we need to speak. I am blessed. I have this. Thank you, Father God, because you make it able. Every time Pastor Gary say, be a scientist, it's true. Because if you're curious, take it personal. It's your blessings. And so let's learn together. Plug in your community and just believe God's love in you. And it's gonna work. Absolutely. I really don't even need to comment on that story because it's so clear. And Rick and Dave, would you stand up there over here? Rick, yeah, where's your wife at? She's not with you? What? Oh, she's in Brazil. 
All right. Well, I remember the first time I met them, I didn't know them, but uh, she walked up with this sack of venison. She says, I'm giving my first fruits. Uh, okay. And then she told me the story. I said, you, we've got to hear this story. <laughs> it's, I, mean, it's, I mean, that is the, how the kingdom operates. It is that specific. And she, she told me, she said, I'm like Drenda. I, I'm a like a Drenda, you know, I'm a like Drenda. She said, I'm, I'm bold, you know. <laughs> and so anyway, she was, she was, a, was a, got to testify to those family members that day, didn't she? And probably still testify. She has a lot more stories. She's, oh, she's preaching right now in Brazil. She's preaching down there probably, telling her story. Well, your story tells too. See, change how you think. <laughs> this is, I mean, every week we go through this, but today's lesson was... You have to speak, give that specific seed for a specific harvest and give it that assignment, right? Give it that assignment, speak. So before you come to church, speak over it in church, but, but you want to release it with that direction. See, Jesus already knew what his plan was before he spoke because he already had them sitting in groups. He knew exactly what he was putting in motion. He looked for this specific seed for the specific harvest, he already knew exactly what was going to happen. And when you sow a seed, you can know exactly what's going to happen. Follow the Holy Spirit and learn how it works. Amen. Well, let's stand together. The first step, you say, well, how do these stories work? You know, I think, I think all of us, most of us were probably raised with the religious training. And she mentioned religious training, that you work for God's approval. And, you know, you don't know what God will do. You just kind of hope. But that's not how it works. The first step to enjoying what she's talking about, to enjoy the laws of the kingdom, is to become a citizen of the kingdom. And the Bible says whoever calls in the name of Jesus has the legal right to become a citizen of that great kingdom and a member of God's household. You inherit the kingdom, inherit the estate. It's amazing. But you have to choose. Every man, woman, and child must make that decision to ratify what Jesus did. And then you must make a decision like she did, read books, listened to CDs, came to church. See, she was hungry, and every story you hear, and I say this every time, you're going to pick up, they became a student of the kingdom. Amen. Bow your heads with me. If you're here today, you're at PAL today, you're online today, you say, Pastor, boy, I tell you what, I need to know how this works. I need to know the kingdom and not the religious mad at me, Jesus, that I was taught growing up. Well, we're going to pray together, all of us out loud. And if you would say, Pastor, include me in this prayer. I want to say yes today. I want to know this Jesus. I want to know how the kingdom operates. I say yes. Just raise your hand really high right now and say, Include me in this prayer. People right here in the auditorium, I see hands going up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Over in Powell, online. I always want you to mark the spot. That's why I have you raise your hand. Because I want you to remember when you said these words, you can fight with those words. Because you remember you're not alone. You can go to prayer. God will give you answers. It's not hopeless. You're not an orphan. Wait a minute. I called on the name of Jesus at Faith Life that day. I'm born again. I'm part of the kingdom. I have legal rights. I can go before the Father. He'd give me wisdom in this situation. You need to remember that. That's why I have you raise your hand. Say these words with me. Say, Father, you said in your word that if I call on the name of Jesus, that you'll receive me, make me brand new on the inside, fill me with your Holy Spirit, teach me how life works in your kingdom. I need that. So Jesus, today I say yes. I make you the Lord and the Savior of my life, and I receive all of your goodness. Every promise is my personal promise in my new worldview. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give yourself a clapping hand, and those who have said yes, on the screen, you will see a free download. You can have a seat. A free download. Please get that. It's going to begin your journey. We have Kingdom Track. That's four sessions of orientation, kingdom orientation. We have small groups. Make a point to become a student of the business. That's why I asked you, how many have read this book? Listen, you can't. You're there all week. You're there every week trying to make things happen. Please do not continue to do that in your own strength. Please take the time to 
learn how the kingdom works. It's important. Dorinda? Amen. Amen. The Bible says there's a way that seems right, but it ends in destruction. But not to trust in our own selves, right? Not to lean to our own instruction or our own ways, but instead to acknowledge Him in all our ways and He'll direct our paths. So there's often time that thing where the world is going this way and you feel swept up in it and you've got to do what they do. And if you do what they do, you'll get their results. Exactly. You'll get all the brokenness. You'll get the poverty. You'll get the yep. marriage, divorce rates, all the same things. But if we seek first the kingdom of God and his right way of doing things, all those things will be added. So you're not running after money. Yeah. You're running after God, but you're taking his word and believing this word is yours. And you have what it says and you can do what it says, yes, right? Amen. And you are who he says. Yes. And because your identity is secure in him, you're not chasing after the world to become somebody. You already are someone. You're yeah. a child of God. You're living in his kingdom. You got his instruction manual, what you're supposed to do with your life. And then you go impact whatever area God has assigned you to. He assigned you to a small business. He assigned you to the medical field. He assigned you to education. He assigned you to government. Wherever he places you, you go take the light, the love, yes. the truth, the yep. answers, the wisdom, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, God's way of doing things. Amen? Amen. Amen. I think it's so important for us to remember our rights come from God. They do not come from government. They are, they are rights that God gave us, right? The right, your freedoms, every, and inside of every person is that desire for freedom to do and, and establish themselves and to conquer and to go and have success and build something. That's in all of us unless someone stripped it from us. And whenever we look to government or man to give us our rights, they also will take our rights. That's right. Our rights come from God. And when we Amen. honor God first, then any governmental sphere, anybody else has to first submit to God, right? They can't just come and control and take things from you. And that's where we, when we start looking to government to provide for us and, you know, give us money and fix this, they always mess it up. They take your freedom to do that. Yep, and so it's right. better look to God and his system. This really is a financial revolution because it is looking to the one that created everything to be our answer, to show us how to live, how to prosper, how to be in health, how to live our lives. And there is freedom. And whom the sun sets free is free, free indeed. indeed. So don't give Amen. anyone your rights. Take them from God and make sure you live them to the fullest. What you see is what you're going to have. So let this paint your vision. Right. This paints a vision for everything, our communities, our families, our finances, our lives. And so if we'll look to this word, we will have good success. And I'm so Amen. proud of Dea. She's so on fire for God. And every time I talk with her, she's just full of life. And, you know, she's excited. She said, lay hands on me. I'm going to Brazil and I'm going to be a witness and a light and I'm going to do this and that. If you see that and you say that, you will have that. Amen. Why do you think the enemy wants to break you, hurt you? wound you, put you down, keep you from your destiny right. and tell you, you can't, you can't, you can't. He's trying to keep you from having impact for the kingdom of God. Right. This is your hour. This is the time the spirit of the Lord has anointed you to preach That's good right. news to the poor. Amen. Amen. And I like yes. what Pastor Gary says. The good news to the poor is you don't have to be poor anymore. That's right. Amen. Amen. Right. And no, right. no person's going to fix that. Now, we live in a volatile year. We know this is uncertain. These are uncertain times, but we know the one who is certain. It's a rock. Amen. The rock. He's the same yesterday, today, the rock. and forever. Go to the rock. Amen. Stand together. Lay your hand on your giving. Are you ready? All right. Say this with me. Say, Father. Father. Your word says. Your word says. That you give seed to the sower. You give seed to the bread sower. for the eating. Bread for the and eating. And you'll increase my seed. And you'll increase my seed. Make me rich in every way. Make me rich in every way. That I may be generous. That I may be generous on every occasion. On every occasion. Run my race. Run my race with full provision. With full provision. Leave an inheritance to Leave my an grandchildren. To my grandchildren. Children. Children. Amen. Amen. We thank you for that. Thank in you Jesus for that. name. In Jesus Amen. name. Amen. Amen. Hey, one brief announcement before we leave today. Uh, as you know, Pastor Drenda is running for Knox County Commissioner. She is stepping over into that area.
And uh, just in case you're interested, we have a kickoff party in Knox up at Mount Vernon on the square. There's a, uh, on, there's a grand hotel right there on the circle. And we're meeting there at three today. If anyone wants to join us up there, three o'clock today at uh, the square at the Grand Hotel uh, to kick off that uh, campaign. So see some of you there, especially if you're in Knox County, but you don't have to live in Knox County to come. And so we bless you today. Trendy would just dismiss us in prayer. Father, we thank you. These are your people. They walk in your blessing and your anointing and your calling, God. They go forth and they take territory. They're the head, not the tail. They're above and not beneath. They walk and everything they do, touch anything they operate in, God, it prospers. Everything they put their hand to, God, they have that territory and they become the blessed of the Lord. People will take notice of them. Sickness and disease has no place in their body. No, we right. speak to any disease and we command it to leave in the name of Jesus, yes. the healer, who by his stripes yes. healed us all. And we thank you, Father, they are walking in great provision and blessing and they conquer territory in this hour and become what you called them to become today in Jesus name and America shall be saved. Amen. 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 We'll see you on first Wednesday.